there, it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. I'm afraid I am still a bit croaky. I'm feeling significantly better than I have been, but I am still a bit croaky. But this is the project that I want to show you how to make today. This is for the Inspire Create Challenge latest colour challenge, which is to use Knight of Navy, Crumb Cake and a colour of your choice, which in my case is Calypso Coral. Now, I know the other design team members have picked other colours, um, so lots of inspiration over on the website, and you can get to that by going and visiting my website from the link below, and then click on the link to that. Um, so this is the card, and then on the inside I've just got a little bit of decoration. I'm using a set that I have failed to use so far, which is Mountain Air. It's a bundle. So it comes with dyes, although I'm not using the dyes today. I'm going to have to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's reversible. So it is one of our reversible um, dye uh, stamp sets, which is amazing. So let me show you how I've made this. I'm using a few techniques, so bear with me. Um, I'm going to start with a piece of scrap paper and... I'm going to grab my mountain, um, ooh, and apparently some bits of vellum, which should have been in the bin, so let's resolve that one. So the thing with reversibles is that they are reversible and got fluff on them. Um, I want to start with the patterned side rather than the solid side, so I'm going to pop it down and pick it up with my block. It's important that you do that and don't do what well, I'm just going to show you how to not do, don't put it down and then just sort of, you know, put it any old how, because you can end up with it being misshapen, which is fine for the technique that I'm using, but if you wanted to use the dies, not so good, um, because the dies wouldn't fit. So, let me just make sure that's not going to be an issue. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab a scrap-ish, a small piece, of Whisper White, just had to check that I hadn't got my liner, which I haven't, um, and I'm going to start by heat embossing. So some embossing buddy, obviously, because we know we have to use embossing buddy if we're going to emboss, and Versamark ink, and I'm going to ink up the whole of the stamp, even though some of it is going to end up off the piece of paper. I like to make sure I've inked up the whole thing just so that I can decide nearer the time where I'm going to put it. So if I'd only inked up this bit here, I'd be stuck with that being in the middle. Inking up all of it means that I can move it around. Um, and I want to make the whole card because I then have the opportunity to decide which bit I'm going to die cut. Uh, so I'm going to go about there, I think. Make sure you press down really well. And lift and then grab your embossing powder, and I'm using just standard Whisper White. And apparently spreading it all over the place. So that's good, just as well I've got it on a piece of paper really, isn't it? So let's pop the stray bits back in. And that is our embossing powder. I'm just gonna tap the back just to make sure I haven't got any loose bits, and grab my trusty cheese board. Now I'm going to be making some noise, so while I'm doing that, as ever, the subscribe button is in the bottom right-hand corner, so um, while you're probably going to be deafened with the heat gun, always a good time to subscribe. So here we go. This is the bit that I could watch for hours. I love heat embossing and watching that powder just become molten. Oh, it's just magic. And I just want to make sure I haven't missed anywhere. And turn off the heat gun. 
So that is our heat embossing. You probably can't see it at the moment because it's white. So pop my cheese board away. Uh, grab a chamois, which is <coughs> surprisingly cleaner than it looks. It's not completely clean, but it is not as dirty as it looks because um, they get dirty and they stain, particularly with black, um, but they're still clean. So take off my stamp and pick it up the other way round and we are ready for the next step. Now the next step is going to be to do our mountains and the first thing I want to do is ink it up at full strength and stamp. Now most of it won't be seen but that's fine um, and the reason most of it won't be seen is because most of it will be in the bits between the um, heat embossing. I am going to bring in my pierce mat just to see if I can get a little more showing. So we've inked up. Now as I say this is not going to line up perfectly. I'm going to make sure it's all fully inked though. Okay so I'm going to line it up ish I think is probably the best way to describe it and stamp and I'm sort of going oh, exactly, or as near as I can, exactly over where I stamped before. It won't be exact, but it'll be fairly close. So you can probably see that some of the areas haven't got any, um, any ink in them, and that's because they were too pushed back. Uh, I am just going to get a kitchen towel and very gently take off anything that is absolutely on the surface. Just so that it's not just sitting there being wet. And doing this also means you get into some of those little grooves that you wouldn't otherwise get in. There we go. Now that is going to dry back, um, so that's fine. The next thing I need to do is to repeat the process. I'll get rid of the mat. Repeat the process, but this time having stamped off. Um, and I'll be doing this a few times because I want shades of crumb cake. So stamp off once and just offset a bit. And stamp again. And again, I want to make sure that I'm pressing really quite hard to get a good impression there. And I am going to ink up again because if I didn't ink up again before I stamped off, I would, or before I restamped, I would get lines where the ink hadn't been um, been used before. That probably isn't terribly well described, and I apologise for that. Right, and again I've offset a little bit more, like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is to actually do some more stamping down here. And again I'm going to use Stamped Off, and I'm going to turn my stamp upside down and just make sure that I'm overlapping a wee bit, and that's just so that I don't end up with any really harsh lines between the areas because I'm now going to put Knight of Navy over the top. So let me remove this for the moment. I will need to pop it back in a bit, but for the moment that's all I need it for. And I need the trees. And the trees again are the right way up and then the right way up. They're reversibles is what I'm trying to say. My brain. Right, so Knight of Navy, and I am going to stamp off the first time because Knight of Navy is very dark. So stamp off once and then stamp again. And I want to kind of overlap some of the mountain side. Not too much, because some of it won't actually take. So 
So that's that one. And then I'm going to do the same again, but having stamped off twice and come and fill in some of those gaps. Uh, this is where having inked up the whole stamp means you can actually do this whole movement around bit. go. Right, now I'm going to come down, actually I'm going to take this off and come down to put some, actually no, I'm going to go, gosh I used to be indecisive and all that, I'm going to come down a wee bit, just to add a bit more down there. Now I'm going to clean it off and turn it over. Just want to make sure I'm getting as much of this off before I turn it over as possible. Obviously, in the privacy of your own home, you can spend a little more time cleaning your stamps. But for the sake of the video, I don't want to take too long. Right. OK, so let's ink up. Stamp off a couple of times. You can see why you need a piece of scrap paper. And let's just fade that a bit. I have learnt from my first one that uh, fading is a bit actually quite a good idea uh, because otherwise you do end up with a bit of a line between this and your crumb cake. I know I was going to change stamp but actually I don't think I need to because I'm using the reverse side so it doesn't know whether it's a mountain or a tree. Where are we time wise? Mm, need to get a move on. Okay, let's, oops, not stamp off very well but actually that's probably a good thing. Overlap. That's probably exactly what I need. Right, okay, so let us bring in a really high-tech piece of equipment which is some post-it note and these are just fussy cut mountains and I want those so there's a little bit of the mountain showing but not too much don't need the crumb cake anymore I will need the Knight of Navy even if it's only to show you what I'm going to be sort of doing right um, Calypso Coral is my next colour and I've got a sponge dauber which I'm rolling onto the paint and I am doing a continual roll. If you go backwards and forwards you're only going to ink up a bit of the roller and then I'm going to actually turn my paper over I think because that's pretty disgusting now. It's very navy. So I'm going to Now, I'm not too worried about the top because I am going to bring in some Knight of Navy, but I do want a reasonably clean bit of brayering, which that probably is all I need. So we can close that up and remove that. And there we've got a nice kind of Calypso coral backing. And I've got a sponge dauber and I've actually already got some nice of navy ink on a block and I've added a little bit of glycerin. You can get that in the cook baking area of your supermarket. Um, it just makes things go a bit smoother. Um, you don't have to use it but it does mean that you're going to get a smoother blend. Probably do need a little bit more ink up from the lid. Now my sponge dauber has already got quite a lot of glycerin on it so I'm not having to reintroduce too much and I want to leave some of the Calypso coral clear and some of it less so and I don't I'm not worried that I'm going into the mountains a bit because I'm going to die cut the center out but you could leave your mask on probably best to leave your mask on until you're finished 
but that is all I need. And then I need one of my stitched labels, which I thought I had out. Yes, I do. I put it in my little pack. And I'm just going to choose where I'm going to die cut. Now, I want to get, kind of hide that funny little mark there, which is just a bit odd. I am just going to grab my kitchen roll again and just get rid of some more of the loose ink. There we go. So I'm just going to pop this through the die cutting machine. Yeah, I think there's probably where I need it. Yeah. So the question is, which colour are you going to add with your Knight of Navy and crumb cake? The question is also, did I get rid of that funny splodge? It's just there, so that's fine. I'm happy with that. Right, let's get clean area and introduce the other bits that I need. Oh, I just need to do one last bit of stamping before I get any older. In fact, two last bits of stamping. So I've got one of the trees, it's the narrow tree, and I'm going to stamp off and stamp once, stamp twice, stamp three times just on the side of the card. And then I've got the little birdies, which I'm just going to add in the sky just as a something to break up the the sky really. Okay so don't need that. I've got a Calypso coral um, nested label so that's going to go on there. This is the hammered metal from the autumn winter catalogue just on some crumb cake and a knight of navy base. So let me fold my card first, grab a bone folder, just to make sure everything is lined up well, and my bone folder, and some adhesive. We are getting to the end of this particular pot of adhesive. Now it's up to you if you want to use um, a, an embossing folder or not. I mean obviously you don't have to make the project. And if you did use this embossing folder, um, it would then be a question of which way up you wanted it. So did you want the, the raised bits up or down? Raised bits up or down, that is not good English at all. Whether you want there to be soft, soft larger lumps or the, the other side. It just depends which way up you want to use it. It's what I'm trying to say, but just not saying it terribly well. I'm going to blame my chest infection. Okay. <coughs> so pop this on here. Use that wiggle room to push that across, get rid of that piece of fluff, turn over and press, and then some dimensionals. Whoops, that one's almost off already. I'm going to make this postage proof by putting extra dimensionals on, but obviously if you're hand delivering, you don't have to. And then all I need to do is pop this on the front of the card, put the liner in, and then we're done. So we've had heat embossing, we've had embossing folders, we've had blending with um, a brayer, we've had blending with a dauber, we've had lots how to use reversibles, 
lots and lots of technique. Right, so let's pop some snail on the back of this, just because I'm a little concerned that my liquid adhesive is running out. Time to break out a new one. Now do remember that if you're in the UK, you can shop with me either by going to my online store below or over on my website. Um, let me bring in the original. If you're in the UK, France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands, you can join my team. Um, and remember that during celebration, you get to add a free stamp set of your choice. So long as it's not a host set or a celebration set, you get the mini chopper and a sampling of the designer series paper in addition to the usual £130 or 170 I want to say 9 75 179 175 euros. Um, so, yeah. And it's only £99 or 125 129 One of them I know is a 9 euros. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching. Sorry, it's all been a bit mad. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye!